avoid moving to South Idaho unless you can deal with these 10 facts. South Idaho can be a wonderful place to live, but today we're going to talk about 10 reasons why you might want to avoid this place, so stick around. I just realized everybody is here to party. Oh, yeah. What's up, guys? My name is Dr. Ron Jones, and I'm a real estate agent here in South Idaho. I work with the Jeremy Orton Real Estate Group at Keller Williams based out of Twin Falls. You can reach me by simply typing in ronjones.me in your favorite browser, or I provided a uh, handy-dandy QRS code. Just snap that with your phone, and it'll take you right to my website. This channel is for you if you're interested in living or working or playing or eating or buying real estate here in Southern Idaho. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the notification bell uh, so you'll be notified whenever I put out a new video. I'm going to try to put one out every week. I'm thrilled by the number of people who have reached out to me to want to know more about Southern Idaho and what they can expect if they move here. So if this is you and you have questions about what it's like to live here in Southern Idaho, leave a comment after this video or you can reach out to me with a phone call, text or email. I love to talk to people about what it's like getting relocated to this beautiful part of the country. So today we're going to talk about 10 reasons why you should probably avoid Southern Idaho, avoid Southern Idaho if you can't handle these things. Now, I'm not saying these things are negative, and I'm not saying these things are positive. I've lived here for about eight years, so I've experienced all this myself firsthand, and, and I'm going to have my own opinions. I'm going to share these opinions with you, but it's up to you whether or not you want to decide that they're positive or negative and, and how they're going to affect you on whether or not Idaho is a place that you want to call home. So the first thing about Idaho, you should know, it is a very red state. Almost everyone around here is extremely conservative. It's really what draws a lot of people here, which means the locals care a lot about their country, their churches, their firearms. Most people in this town attend church, and they believe that everyone else should. They support Idaho as a right-to-work state. Some people like it, some people don't, but that's how Idaho is. So if that's something you're not comfortable with or identify with, Idaho probably isn't a place for you. Number next. Now, number two, Idaho's weather can be quite extreme. Southern Idaho is actually classified as a mountain desert region, so summer temperatures can be pretty high. Right now, we're September 3rd, and I think we're hitting a high of 102 today. Uh, we don't get the extreme snowstorms that North Idaho gets in the winter, but we do get plenty of snow. In Southern Idaho, we do get to enjoy all four seasons to the fullest some winters, it snows enough to have the two-lane roads can become one-lane streets. Uh, barn roofs can collapse. Roads can close. It can get pretty severe. You definitely want to have a generator handy. And in the summertime, that's one of the most beautiful times here in southern Idaho, but we do have the potential for smoke seasons. That's from all the forest fires that are happening over in California and Oregon and Washington. All that smoke seems to find its way over here somehow, and that's something you should be aware of. You might also get the chance to learn how to put some snow chains on your tires if you want to get into some of the ski resorts, like getting down to the Magic Mountain Ski Resort. Sometimes you have to put on some snow chains. Depends on your vehicle. You should be fine if you have a good four-wheel drive or an all-wheel drive. Number three, Idaho has abundant wildlife. Everywhere you drive, you're going to see a bunch of different critters running around. You'll see some deer on the side of the road, uh, elk, a squirrel, uh, one of my favorites, rock chucks. They're like everywhere. Uh, lots of hawks and eagles flying around. Barn owls are really cool. It's just part of living here, and it's what attracts some people, especially if you're into hunting. But something you can be happy about is that we don't have a lot of the predators like they do up north. We don't have the bears and all that stuff. In fact, you hardly ever even see any snakes around here. Nevertheless, always be aware of your surroundings if you come down to visit and you're outdoors, especially if you're out alone. Number four, tourism is a thing here in Idaho. This is a vacation spot for many people, especially in the summer. South Idaho, you really feel it because we just have a bunch of small towns around here. So when there's a big influx of 10 or 20,000 people, uh, which can happen at different events around here, you really feel it. Um, when the people are vacationing, they're not in as big of a rush. They're kind of gawking around and moseying along. 
which can create a lot of congestion on our roads. Uh, Idahoans aren't really used to that. There's pretty sparse population here, so we're used to getting where we need to go in five to ten minutes, so it can get kind of frustrating. So I'll give you a little tip if you come to visit. Stay off of Blue Lakes. Use Washington Boulevard. For some reason, everybody comes into town over the Perrine Bridge. They're on the on Blue Lakes right there. They stay there. They can't figure out how to get off of it, and it just clogs it like a bad artery full of cholesterol. Still, it is a thing here in Idaho, and tourists, you know, sometimes can be kind of aloof, gawking around, taking pictures, not knowing where they're going or which way to turn. Um, they can leave their trash in place. They cut you off in traffic. They just don't have the same manners that Idahoans are known to have, so it can create some problems for people. It's just something you should be aware of. We also recognize the out-of-state tags very quickly, but not for the usual reasons that you would think. See, here in Idaho, we can tell where the locals live based on the letters at the beginning of the license plates. And it's the law here to have a, a license plate on the front and the back of the vehicle. So, for example, if you live in Twin Falls County, the front of your plate will start with 2T. If you're from Gooding County, it will start with 2G, et cetera. So when we're driving around, we can tell what part of the area people are from. And we can also obviously see if it's an out-of-state plate. Number five would be the people here in Southern Idaho. Once you get moved here, get those plates switched over and start fitting in. People can be charming, but until that happens, if they know you're moving from out of state, especially if you're from California, they'll tell you how much they don't want you to bring your politics here. Idahoans can be very amicable, but they're also very defensive about their state growing too quickly, getting too big, or becoming too much like other states where everybody's leaving. They do not want to see Idaho become another Californian so that they have their own way of letting you know, please leave your politics wherever you're from. Many people are coming here. I myself am a transplant from Arizona about eight years ago when my job in healthcare brought me here. So there is a good portion of the population that is from out of state, but still you just need to know that people can get a little aggressive. So you want to get those plates changed over as quickly as possible. And you'll actually find that the plates are pretty cheap here. Number six, now, this might not seem like a big deal, and I didn't have to deal with it for a little while, but when I did, man, it really sucked. Allergies here can be a big problem in southern Idaho. The pollen gets so thick here during the year that you can literally see it floating through the air when you're walking around like confetti at a Macy's Day parade. Uh, you, can, you can walk around, and there's just a thick layer of it on the ground. It looks, it looks like cotton just floating everywhere. When, when I had it this past season, I just constantly woke up with my nose and sinuses completely full, my head pounding, and uh, I tried all different kinds of antihistamines and Sudafed, and what, I, what I've heard works the best uh, is to get yourself some local honey, transporters of pollen, and so the pollen finds its way into the honey, so by consuming the local honey, you're consuming the local pollen, and the theory is it helps you build up your immune system, so... If you move here, start taking some of that raw honey and help to, to uh, counterbalance those allergies. Number seven, for those of you, and, and you'll see this in my pros and cons video, for those of you who like a lot of entertainment, Idaho is severely lacking really in that department. I mean, Boise actually being the biggest city that we have in the state, Boise's kind of got it going on in that, in that area, in that arena, pun intended. Um, but all the other towns uh, are tiny compared to Boise, so we don't have a lot of shows. We don't have comedy clubs. Uh, you know, up in Boise, they've got the Broncos to go watch for people that are really into the football up there. But um, there's just a lot of, you know, we don't have the concerts. We don't really have the shopping. We, we don't even really have what my daughters would call a serious mall. Um, not a lot of shows. Again, not a lot of comedy club type stuff. So if entertainment is significant to you, you won't find it in Southern Idaho. It is it is improving. We are starting to add some things. We added, a, there's an axe throwing, the bearded axe. You can go throw throw axes um, at targets. We have, uh, you know, outdoor miniature golf. We have uh, uh, car shows on the regular. We have a lot of things like that, but just not a lot of your traditional um, stuff. Number eight, I might get some pushback on this one, but it is what it is. Idaho is terrible at driving. We rank number seven in terms of the worst drivers in the country, and you'll see it. Uh, you got people not paying attention at lights, people sitting through lights. You got people not using their blinkers. Uh, and there's not really a lot of median dividers here like you have in your bigger cities. So if people start veering off, you have problems because there's nothing to stop them from coming into your lane. So it, it, you may find your car insurance to actually be a little bit higher here 
pay attention to what zip code you pick when you register your car uh, and see what it does to your insurance rates here. So just something to be aware of. Number nine, and I have to be really careful with this one because um, we're going to talk about Idaho's education, which we're not ranked very high. Last I checked, we're number 40 in the country. It is coming up, and that's probably because we got a lot of people coming here, which is raising our tax base, and, and very little of that's going back in the school, apparently. But I, I do know a lot of the uh, of the teachers here. You know, it's a small community, so you get to know everybody. And I know the teachers are trying very hard, but something's just not clicking in the upper echelon of the education system. I myself have a doctorate in education. I applied to five teaching positions last year, and I didn't get a single call on any of them. And I know we need teachers. Uh, my, I got six kids in the schools. I, I know what we need. So somebody somewhere up that ladder isn't paying attention and, and it trickles down and you can see it in the lack of education due to lack of teachers. And so maybe one of you locals that sees this can shoulder tap somebody in the education system and say, hey, are we going to fix this or not? Otherwise, we do have some private schools. We do have some charter schools. So if you're moving here, do your due diligence and check out the schools. Look at the uh, exam scores and uh, just do your research. Last but not least, number 10, and this kind of goes along with number one, but but uh, Idaho is a fiercely independent state. As some people call it an isolationist state. If you remember during the pandemic, we, we had a lot of people that didn't wear their masks. There wasn't a lot of mask wearing going on. And and if you remember when Antifa tried to say they were going to come to uh, one of our northern towns and, and march, uh, we had a bunch of people show up with bulletproof vests and their guns and and uh, anti-march to make sure that that didn't get out of control. Idaho is very uh, is very upfront about how they feel about their state and they're willing to protect their state. They're very conservative. Some people call that isolationism. Uh, they just don't care what's going on in the rest of the country. Just don't come here and mess up what they have and, and uh, live and let live kind of a deal, but don't bring any of your garbage here. They won't stand for it. So again, these are my top 10 reasons that you might not want to move to Idaho. I'm not saying these are negative or positive, but after eight years, this has been my experience of what it's like living here. But let me know in the comments. Do you think those things are positive? Do you think they're negative? Is, is this something Idaho should improve on or should it stay just the way it is? And if you're serious about moving here, and if you're serious about moving here, please make sure you reach out and give me a call. Shoot me a text. If you like this video, leave a comment, hit the thumbs up. Tap the notification bell so you get notified whenever I come out with a new video. And until the next one, guys, I'll see you later. I just realized everybody is here to party. Oh, yeah.